Hey, what's going on? Today we're going over five tips for the MS-20. Uh, we're gonna look at some of the things that function different on the MS-20 than they do on more traditional synths or more modern synths. Some things that just took me a little bit to figure out. I'm gonna be using the MS-20 Mini, but you can apply all these things to the OG or the full scale one. Okay. Okay, tip number one is for the behavior of the envelope generator too. This took me a little bit longer to figure out than I think it should have. I was having a hard time understanding how the signal that's coming from the envelope generator was controlling the amp and the cutoff frequencies and you being able to hear the difference between the two. In my mind, I'm so used to working with two envelope generators where you can set them differently and you can hear the difference of the cutoff frequency. I didn't realize that the voltage that's being sent to or being received by the cutoff frequencies is negative five volts to plus five volts, whereas the amp is getting zero volts to five volts. I'm gonna start by moving the sustain level down. And as I do that, the effect of the cutoff frequency will become more audible. So here's all the way up. Right, and about three here, you can start to hear the effect of the cutoff frequency. And if I crank this a little bit more, move the low pass filter down just a little bit more, maybe a little bit more resonance or peak. It's really simple, but for whatever reason, it took me a little while to wrap my brain around that. So you can still get a really snappy envelope cutoff filter type sound while just using just one envelope generator because the signal that's going is different to the amp than it is to the cutoff frequency. Tip number two is for the behavior of envelope generator one. I had a hard time understanding how this envelope worked because I think it's a little different than other synths. Whenever I was trying to make drum sounds, I would crank up the EG1 for the frequency, or the, um, the oscillator frequency. And immediately I'm sort of not <laughs> getting this sort of sound that I want. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll turn up the release a little bit. <laughs> and I can't really get like these snappy sounds that I want. It's a really quick fix. So if you take the envelope generator one, reverse out and then put that into uh, the frequency control for both of the oscillators, now you're gonna get something that makes a little bit more sense. Sounds a little bit more like what we're used to. Perfect, right? And the reason for that is if you could take a look at the panel, the way that the envelope sort of works is it's rounded as it's going up, as it's reaching that attack phase, but on the release phase, it's much more sharp going down. So when you use that, you're able to get these more snappy envelopes that you can use for making cool drum sounds. Really simple. So if you're trying to make drum sounds, envelope generator one, reverse out into the frequency. You get the sounds that you want. <laughs> Okay, tip number three is about the mod wheel and how to use it. When I first got it, I couldn't figure out how to use the mod wheel and it was just sitting there and I'm thinking like, oh, this would be cool if I could, why isn't it mapped to pitch or something automatically? Um, and I, it took me like just a little bit of digging to figure out how to route it. And it's really simple. So um, let's take a patch cable and we're gonna plug into this mod wheel thing. Hopefully you can see this here. So a um, little mod wheel looking icon here. We're gonna plug in here and you can just plug this into like anything, um, anything that's an input. So let's just go to total, right? We'll hit total here. And then these top three controls here for the frequency, like the pitch, right? The cutoff frequency, all of these are controlled um, by this total here. So we could do sort of both of these at the same time, uh, both the high pass and the low pass filter. That's really cool because now you're getting these sort of formant vowel sounds with the control of the mod wheel. <laughs> okay, um, we could go to the pitch, I guess. That sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> Here's 
Here's something that I think is like a pretty straightforward um, patch that maybe we should all know. What I'd like to do is have the LFO or the modulation generator control the pitch, but I would like to be able to use the mod wheel to control it. I'm going to take the output of the LFO or the modulation generator, and I'm gonna put it into the VCA input. And then I'm gonna take the output here and I'm gonna put this into the frequency. Let me turn everything down, right? Um, this here, we'll turn this up. But it's just going crazy as I hit any of these notes. Well, if I take my mod wheel here and I put this into the control input for the VCA, now I'm not getting anything. I put this at uh, 50%, that's zero volts. And then if we turn this up, so we could dial this in a little bit more. And you could do other things, right? Maybe you could take the output here. That's well, kind of like video gamey. Sounds like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Tip number four is the ring modulator oscillator. The ring oscillator? I don't know. When I first got an MS-20, the first time that I had one, I didn't ever use it. I don't, I don't know why I never like went all the way over to try this one out, but it makes like really awesome sounds. And I think if you just don't have a game plan and you sit down and you just start messing around and you're just searching for random sounds, that's a really cool place to start. So I'm gonna go from saw, pulse, little pulse, ring. Oh, that already sounds cool. And when you mess around with the pitch, then you get all these sort of FME sort of ring modulated sounds that sound like robots. And I think it sounds super cool. You know what, let me, hold on, let me fix this. I gotta bring this camera into the, all right, cool. I think that's better. So now we can see. So I'm gonna just sort of mess around with the pitch. I noticed that whenever you mess with the pulse width on VCO1, for whatever reason, it also affects it. And I haven't read in the manual to figure out why it does that, but who cares, right? I'm gonna mess around with some effects again. Um, It just sounds really cool to me and I'm not really thinking or, or, or doing anything and the cool sounds are coming because this machine is awesome. Um, let's try some more. I wonder um, if we take the modulation generator for the pitch if it does something crazy or not. <laughs> Another thought too would be because pitch is affecting this in such a way that we could take the envelope generator one and have it modulate this. Cool sound design. I'm gonna put some effects on again. Um, maybe like something like this. All right. You get the point. It's really cool and I think you could just mess with ring modulator and get all these crazy sounds. And if you like to do sound design, this is a really good place to start. Okie dokie. Okay, last tip and tip number five is that this thing's just a big FX pedal um, because you have the external signal processor and you can run audio into it. I have the output of my interface going into the signal in, um, and when you hold down a key, well, you gotta play something, so. I'm playing something now, 
Um, it's just a drum break. And as soon as I hit one of these keys, we should be able to hear this. Pretty cool. I have our bandpass filter or the low cut and the high cut here so I can shape these frequencies. white noise into trig in. I learned something this week. So the white noise into the trig in, and then that opens up the gate or whatever, right? And then so I'm free to just like mess around with stuff. Um, if you take the envelope out and you plug it into the VCO one and two CV in, and you start to turn VCO one and two up, you should be triggering the oscillators. Okay, right, so there's a lot of fun to be had with that. It's just one drum loop, but you can run anything through it or you could run other oscillators through it and there's a lot to explore there. I think whenever I first got the MS-20, I didn't even really think to process anything through it. I just thought about running itself back into itself and overdriving it, but I didn't think about having access to these really cool sounding filters and triggering oscillators. It's cool, right? So that's something that you should do. You should play with it. Thanks for hanging out. I'm probably gonna do a ton more videos on the MS-20 as I continue to learn about it. And also, I'm not buying any new gear for the rest of the year, so I am forced to stick with this and learn it, and hopefully um, I can share some of that stuff with you. If you get an opportunity this week, or this month, or this year, please take a listen to my album that I dropped like six, eight, nine months ago, I don't even know. It's called Precipice, and it's done with 90% Nord drum, so like all the sounds from it are mostly from the Nord drum, and I'd be really, you know, grateful if you took the time to do that. Anyways, have a good week, bye.